As a creator, I'm constantly in search of the best tools for the job. In my experience, there is no perfect anything, and so it becomes a game of picking the tools that work best for my workflow and the type of content that I'm creating. And sometimes that means different tools for different things. But above all else, I need all of my tools to save me time. Time is a valuable asset, and in my world, there simply isn't enough of it. Between school, work, video projects, and my personal life, there is never enough time. And that's where technology comes in. I've always been sort of a nerd when it comes to technology and it used to be my passion for a while before filmmaking took over. I was always interested in buying whatever I could and tinkering with it to get it to suit my needs. And it's where I found value. I could buy something cheaper and hack away at it to suit my needs perfectly. As the years went by, my available time started to shrink away. I no longer had the time for a lot of that. And that brings me to the topic of today's video, five ways Apple products save me time. Now I preface by saying this, I used to hate Apple. You couldn't pay me enough money to use an Apple product. For the longest, I thought they were products that people who didn't actually care about technology used and they bought them blindly because they preferred Apple tell them how to use their own devices. So I was an Android fanboy for a long time. My first Android device was a Samsung Galaxy Player, then the Google Nexus 5, then the Nexus 6P. So I was an Android purist and I wanted the best that Android offered at the time. Fast forward a year later, and I find myself buying an iPhone for my birthday. I too cannot believe I was buying the one product I swore I would never buy. But let's jump into the reasons why this system works for me. Number one, iMessage. I used to crap on iMessage a lot. What could be so special about blue bubbles? I was perfectly fine being green. For me, iMessage has come in handy when I need to send video drafts to clients and friends who also have Apple products. Before, I would have to upload to either YouTube or Google Drive just for them to see in a decent quality. And then throughout that process of uploading and waiting, I was losing time. The ability to send full length video drafts of decent quality and it'd be right inside their messaging app saves me time and saves my clients time too. Number two, AirDrop. Holy crap, how did I go so long without having this? Let me talk you through my process, my previous process with an Android phone. After I'd have video edited and complete, I would plug in my phone to my computer. I'd use this app called Handshaker, which would allow me to access my phone storage. I would then drag and drop the file, wait on it to finish, then open up Instagram, find the file on my phone, and then be able to share it from there. So that might not sound like a lot, but it took too long. And being able to send a file, not know what in the world Apple is doing to achieve it, but have a transfer in mere seconds to my iPhone saves me so much time. And the same goes for if I'm editing videos and I've captured something on my phone that I need to transfer to my MacBook to edit with. Being able to just beam them instead of plugging in a cable and having to know the exact location of where those files are on my phone saves me immense amounts of time. And it's not like I was slow doing it with my Android phone. It's just that Apple's way saves me so much time. Now, I mean, I don't like the fact that I can't see where my files are stored on my iPhone. I can do it on my Mac, I should be able to do it on my iPhone. But when you buy into their idea of how this should work, I'm once again, saving time. Number three, Final Cut Pro. Now this is one that is really special to me because it is how I've been doing this for the past six years. Apple made a convert out of me way back in high school and I think every other editing platform has been at a disadvantage with me because they take too much time to use. Being used to Final Cut Pro and the fluidity of the magnetic timeline and how streamlined and clean the interface is saves me time. Resolve is a close second, but Final Cut Pro has been tuned and optimized to perform excellently on Apple machines. And the render times, oh my gosh, the glorious render times. With all of this working together, it means I'm able to quickly get video ideas out of my head and onto a video editing timeline. With Final Cut Pro, I'm able to edit at the speed ideas come to my head. Now, I've had experience with DaVinci Resolve and Premiere, and at least while using a MacBook, they are not able to keep up with my pace. Sure, I could change my workflow up and introduce proxies and eGPUs and just learn more about how to get faster in each platform, but I just don't have to do that with Final Cut Pro. It is the one thing Apple has made that, for me, just works. Number four, staying healthy. Now this one is kind of weird because it's, it's kind of twofold. On one hand, with all that time I saved above, it allows me to be done with my work and go to my you know favorite place, the gym. On the other hand, when I'm drilling away at work, school, and video projects, my watch gives me friendly reminders to stay healthy. I can get really carried away when it comes to editing and sometimes I need to take a break. It's really great that my Apple Watch will keep track of my workouts and my daily movement so I can see visually the progress or lack 
thereof that I'm making. Having to juggle a business on the side causes a lot of stress, and so anytime I can get back time through speeding up my process or simply taking a break and focusing on my health is going to ultimately save me time in the long run. So have you noticed a trend here? I really like to save time. And finally, number five, everything works together. I'll be the first to admit, Apple's ecosystem is overhyped. It's just not that great. Okay, just kidding. It still has its issues though. Apple is just stubborn about like basic simple stuff. But the fact of the matter is, no other company has a system in place that beats theirs or is up to the quality that Apple has established. I honestly don't really care that I can look at messages on my phone and my MacBook and my Apple Watch. It's overhyped. But there are times where I'm in the zone and being able to fire off a quick text to somebody on my laptop and respond to it on my watch makes sense for that specific use case. Apple's features really aren't that revolutionary. In fact, most of them are just other people's ideas with an extra layer of quality on them. But more often than not, it works. Apple doesn't really promise much. They are probably the least feature dense platform on the market, but their stuff works. And being able to rely on their system of services saves me time. Companies like Google and Microsoft are trying, but because of their fragmented ecosystems, it's almost impossible for them to do so. Apple has me bought into their hardware first and foremost, but it's their software that keeps me locked in. The simple truth is that they're doing it better than everybody else. And when everybody else sucks, you honestly don't have to be that great. So that's a wrap for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're new, be sure to sub to the channel. Um, leave a comment or feedback if you like. And yeah, take it easy. Catch you guys in the next one.